Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back. We are here to answer your questions on keto and intermittent fasting. Yes. Karen is here, right? You're right next to me. I am in here. Person. I you, am here. We, we didn't actually edit her in there. Where she's actually live. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not a hologram. That's true. Guys, so if there's, you know, we're going to be covering a lot of stuff. So um, you're going to have questions. Try to just have one question because uh, I can't get into too much of your history. And anything that we say, say or advise is not meant to diagnose people or replace medical care. Use your best judgment. This is just for your own entertainment and research. That being said, um, I am going to go right to the first question because Ryan's been waiting for 30 minutes. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I want to say I appreciate uh, all the videos over the last couple of years I've been watching, so I want to say thanks. And then um, I'll get to it. Um, I have Graves' disease. Uh, I was diagnosed when I was 23. I'm 27 now. I got the 131 radiation done. And uh, I haven't really felt the same since. They kind of just told me, you know, we'll put you on levothyroxine and you'll go, you'll be good. So I have... Um, I do my own test because my doctor won't test it, but uh, I have low T3, uh, regular T4, and um, normal TSH, and I have a very high reverse T3. So I'm wondering if, like, how I could get that down or if you've ever experienced that with anybody else. Yeah, so a couple questions, Ryan. Um, did you have, um, at some point, because it can go either way, do you have, did you have your, your eyes kind of bulging out a little bit when you first had that or not? Yes, I did. I had it right after Epstein-Barr virus in, in ah. high school, college. Okay. When you had Epstein-Barr virus, did you have a lot of, um, was it in the throat where your, your throat closed up and you had a lot of fatigue? Yeah, I was, I was pretty bad for like a year. I probably had Graves' disease for two or three years undiagnosed as well. But. So I, I think here, here's just some tips. Um, you always want to go back to the original trigger and do something to help that situation. Um, because it's really, you have an autoimmune thing and that's more of an immune problem, more than even a thyroid problem. So working on your immune system now, what do I mean by that? Well, there's, there's a couple things that I would recommend. There are some natural anti-viral uh, things that work very well that you should probably be consuming on a regular basis. I'm not gonna kinda get into what, specifics, uh, what specifically to take or what to eat. Because I, if you just look up on my, my YouTube channel, uh, vir natural virus remedies, I think that would be great. But I would actually go into that area to um, see if you can um, start to take something to kind of put these viruses back in remission. Because once you have a virus, it's really hard to kill it because it's not really alive in the first place. They tend to kind of come out, out of remission, back in remission, depending on your stress level. So chances are, right at that time you had uh, Epstein-Barr virus, there was a stress event as well because the adrenals are also involved in that. And then that's kind of what allowed the virus to kind of take place. There is um, another technique using this massage tool um, on the back part of your neck. Um, I, I don't know exactly what video it is, but I will say that it's actually, if you type under Dr. Berg and stress webinar and you watch that, that would be very beneficial to use that on the back of your neck for two things. Number one, if there's some, you know, for the thyroid, there's some points, acupressure points in the thyroid that I find that really, really help. And there's also um, some points in the back of the neck that also help the area that was uh, kind of traumatized back when you were in high school, which is the, the tonsils. And so if you apply that technique on the neck, I think you're gonna get a lot of relief. But I would also focus on just your immune system in general. Um, I do have a video on Graves and I talk about uh, the foods that you should do to bolster your immune system and the adrenal. So, uh, and one last thing, if you have normal T4 and low T3, that means you're not converting because T3 is the con active version of T4. So to improve conversions, you need selenium, you need vitamin A. Um, I doubt you need iodine, but you probably also need uh, your liver and gallbladder to work a little bit better because bile salts will help the conversion. But if there's any hint of still a hyperthyroid, uh, you don't want to take bile salts because that can actually increase the thyroid hormone. All right, Ryan, thank you very much. Karen? Yeah. What do we got? Hi. Hi. Okay. 
So uh, someone wants to know, how long does the keto flu last? Well, you know, it's funny because the keto flu is not really a true flu. Right. It's uh, just symptoms of malaise. Malaise. <laughs> and fatigue. And not mayonnaise. Like right. Okay. So what you'd want to do <laughs> is take, um, it's usually going to be the B vitamins you need. So take B vitamins, nutritional yeast. Or some other natural form Dr. of Berg, B vitamins. Yeast? That would be in a pill form. You can take that. Found at drberg.com. So yeah, so the B vitamins will pull you out of it, um, because what's really happening happening is that symptom is purely your cells needing some nutrients to kick in the mitochondria. So it's not working. You're not generating energy, so you're feeling kind of like run down, like the flu-like symptoms. So um, that's what you need to do. It's real simple, Karen. Very simple. I knew it would be simple. Good. All right. So one more question. Right. Why is intermittent fasting so good for the brain? Oh my gosh, don't moment. get me started. Let me get you started. Well, um, first of all, um, there's something that happens to your body when you, start, when you stop eating. <laughs> like the body goes into this survival mode because it's sensing starvation. So these very specific genes turn on like switches. And the genes are all about um, survival and repair. Um, your immune system starts kicking in, but what's interesting, the body sensing starvation needs to be really smart, it needs to be able to find food. So it turns on um, brain... The food finder? No, it turns on brain regeneration. You start mm. growing your brain cells. And who wouldn't need some extra brain cells Couple. nowadays? I, I know. But if you have um, a deficiency of a brain, if the brain size is shrinking and you want some miracle growth for the brain, brain um, it's Good. fasting. Fasting is uh, the miracle growth for, for the brain. You actually get smarter when you stop eating. Now, it only lasts for a period of time because if you stop eating <laughs> too long, right. you can die. So you, that's why I like intermittent fasting or periodic prolonged fasting. Uh -huh. So that's why. And uh, I'm not going to get too tactical, but that's what happens. Okay. Oh, you appreciate that? It was good. That was yeah. really good. Now, guys, Today we have three really important discussions and tips that we're going to talk about. You coming don't up want later. to miss this. Coming up later so in the don't show. don't click off. Stick with us because you are, this is probably the most it's important be, information this of, this like this year, this of this year. Of this year. Of next This mind. year. Not counting for next year, but yeah, three important things, guys. You, you're going to be happy that you are on this show. <laughs> it is, this information is going to carry you all the way to the end of the year. Yeah. Absolutely. It's going to be amazing. The next year, it's a whole different thing, but this year is the year. So we need to go to Ruth from Texas. Hey, Ruth. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Great. So um, you, you were on I last week, right? You were on last week. Yeah. Yeah. So, so do you have I'm, another I'm question talking. related to urine, uh, drinking your urine? Oh, or is this going to be a different question? Were you the urine drinker? No, she just asked I a question. I know, no, not <laughs> me. I was asking for a friend. Uh, that's right, the the friend. <laughs> I have a friend that drinks urine. No, no it wouldn't be you. No. I no, have we know. a friend. Yeah. I have a friend. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I have uh, I had to take a urine and blood test for a insurance that I'm trying to get, life insurance. And unfortunately, they said that because my um, protein and creatine was too high in my urine mm -hmm. that they were going to have to charge me a higher rate for the insurance Aww. that it signified uh, kidney problems. Now, I'm sure I don't have any kidney problems because I have been drinking that celery, parsley, and um, dandelion greens in my shake every day, mm -hmm. uh, like a cup of each since, uh, I don't know, for at least the last three months. Um, the one thing that I wasn't doing was drinking a lot of water because I was doing the, I'm not thirsty, I don't need to drink water, but I wasn't, I wasn't uh, watching the color of my urine, mm -hmm. and it was very dark. Mm -hmm. So um, I started adding in water, but I, I mean, the blood test, it's showing that, that the glucose is 67, it's low. The fructosamine is 1.77, it's pretty normal. Blood urine, nitrogen is 10. The creatines are 0.69. Uh, 
the blood seems to be fine. It's the actual urine itself that uh, the microalbumin cretin is 151. The total urine total protein is 27. Okay, so this is what I would recommend, Ruth. I think uh, this is, brings up a really important point, which then I should do a video on. Um, mm -hmm. What happens when you have, you know, you have uh, creatine in your urine, but you also have some dark urine. Sometimes people have foamy urine. Sometimes they have a strong odor in the urine. Sometimes there's like all sorts of things they're going to find, especially when you're on keto and IF. Uh, a couple just general points on this because I'm not diagnosing you. Um, yes, you need to probably drink a little bit more fluid, um, but here's the thing. Watch your protein uh, level. So um, some people that do keto, they, they end up doing a bit too much protein. And um, it's easy to do. And what happens is that if you're not drinking enough water, it's just like this super concentrated, kind of smelly, foamy urine. So um, cut down on the urine. The other thing you know, people want to know is like, is this excess urine going to, I'm sorry, excess uh, protein going to cause kidney damage? No, it's basically, it's, if you have a weakness within the liver of the kidney, um, it can weaken the area, but it doesn't actually, it's not going to be the cause of your kidney problems. Because what causes kidney problems is the high carbs. So the fact that you're lowering that, that's going to take a big stress off your kidney and the nervous system and the eyes. But I would make adjustments to the protein amount. I would lower that. I would increase uh, probably some of the greens. And I would add more water. And, um, and then reevaluate. See if that goes away. I, um, if I'm not mistaken, I did release a video on kidney flushing. Maybe you dive into that. I think you did a version of that. I'm not sure exactly. But that's what I would do, Ruth. So there you have it. Thanks, Ruth. We'll see you later. All right, Greg, you had a question about cancer. Go ahead. You're in Florida. Yes. Hi, Dr. Berg. Thanks for Hi. taking my call. Sure. Um, I was just, I'm 51, and I was just diagnosed with uh, Hodgkin's disease last week. And the doctor wants to do a six-month chemo regimen using a protocol called AAVD, which is the four drugs. I am asymptomatic. I have no symptoms. Um, I'd like to avoid chemo. Uh, I've been reading a book called Fight Cancer with a Ketogenic Diet by Ellen Davis. And based on my height and weight, uh, I'm a tall, thin guy, always have been. Uh, she tells me that I need to consume no more than 12 carbs a day, 12 grams, uh, 240 of fat and 74 of protein. I've been doing that for a couple weeks already. I just started doing the intermittent fasting, uh, basically every day fasting for 20 hours and eating for four, uh, two, two separate meals. I'm also doing the 35% hydrogen peroxide thing every day. Um, I'm concerned a little bit on the fasting side. I understand all the benefits, uh, but I'm concerned about weight loss, mm -hmm. number one. And I'm wondering about my carbs because uh, it seems like that there are differences in carbs. And I'm wondering, can I eat plenty, you know, as many carbs as I want, as long as it's out of, you know, cruciferous vegetables mm -hmm. or uh, that sort of thing. And overall, I mean, I'd like to avoid chemo, but... But, uh, you know, I was listening to Seafried and your, your interviews, and um, it's really interesting. But Yeah. Well, you got, you got some good questions there, and um, there's a couple things I would, I would uh, focus on, Greg. Um, number one is the quality of food. Uh, make sure that it's ultra-organic and maybe from the farm, just because um, the one thing you want to avoid is um, GMO foods. So that's, like, very, very important. Um, the other thing that you want to do is you, you don't have to count the cruciferous vegetables as your carbohydrates, but I would definitely consume every single day cruciferous. You want to steam the cruciferous, slightly cook them to get more enhancement of the phytonutrients. Those are all anti-cancer. So you want to uh, beef up, no pun intended, those cruciferous. Um, probably want to do sprouts and then keep that going in your body. Um, I think um, just from a nutrient standpoint, um, the wheatgrass juice powder would be real super concentrated because you're having the nutrients without hardly any carb. Um, the other thing is like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place because you're thin and 
cancer can live on glucose or glutamine, which is a protein. So that's why intermittent fasting is very important. Um, what you can do is do uh, as much intermittent fasting as you can periodic, periodically, but try to keep your protein a little lower, but go up with the fat, healthy fats. So that would be the go-to food to kind of keep your weight from, from you getting too skinny. So like fat is going to be very, very important, high quality fats. Um, coconut oil would be very, very important. Um, but yeah, I would add the cruciferous intermittent fasting and then try to um, do as much research with uh, Thomas Seafried as possible. There's, he has some clinics around the world. I don't know if he has any clinics in the U.S., uh, but I would contact them and see, just see what the latest thing that they're doing and see if you can get some help and um, go from there, look, Greg. Okay? Thanks for your question. All right, Karen. What, you're laughing at me? <laughs> no. Again, you're laughing at me. No, no, these are, are good. Okay, here well, we I'll go. Well, I'll tell you what, before your question, uh -oh. we have to bring up the first tip. Okay. You guys it ready must for be, this? It must be later it's in the show. It's tip time. It's tip time today. Okay. Okay. All right, guys, so we're going to talk about, real shortly, the most powerful fungus killer in the world. And this is the food. I was hoping you were going to talk is the about food. fungus. Yeah, and we're talking, I'm talking toenail fungus. I'm talking candida fungus. Nice. Any fungus yes. among us. So if, we, if you have a fungus, there, there's this one food that you need to consume because it is the most researched and is the most powerful anti-fungus remedy on planet Earth. Wow. In the universe. Okay, you ready for this? <laughs> We're extending it beyond this planet. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, go. And the answer is... Drum roll. What do you think it is? Oh, you guys got... What do you think it is? Apple cider vinegar. Nope. It's garlic. Oh, I knew that. Garlic. So simple. Now, before you just start, you know, swallowing garlic, you want to crush it up. You want to crush it up. That breaks off these little chemicals. And those natural chemicals are not just good for fungus, they're good for bacteria, and they're also good for virus. So, uh, Are they, they good for your relationship? No. Now, you will be single, but you will not have a fungus. Unless so, you both do the garlic. There you go. See? It's you're, like you're really bad now, coffee here. breath. You're really thinking uh, now. So that is the first tip, guys. Don't neglect the, the garlic. Right. All right. Now, there's two more tips, so stay, don't Coming leave. up later in the okay. show. Yes. All right, Karen, let's okay. over to you. What, what do we got? Okay, so where was my fun question here? So how, it's very serious. How do you prevent overdosing on vitamin A when eating baked sweet potatoes? Because <laughs> clearly you're going to have a lot of sweet potatoes if your concern is overdosing. Well, first of all, or is obviously there... you have not read... <laughs> the new body type guide where we talk about not to consume potatoes or sweet potatoes or yams. So right there. Um, and secondly, even if you were going to consume um, that. Sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. You're getting a pre-vitamin A. You're not getting the actual active form of retinol. You're getting the beta carotene that converts, hopefully, at a small ratio. So you're never going to overduce vitamin A take, doing Reduce. any type of plant type things at all. It's when you consume um, like liver from a polar bear that has super concentrations or a seal. If you're up in Alaska and you can start consuming seal liver, you could become toxic with um, the active form of vitamin A, which is retinol. How much seal liver would a person have to eat? I don't think very much. I think I would avoid really? it completely. Yeah, it's super concentrated. See, the vitamin A is very toxic in large amounts to your body. It can kill you. But it's very, it's very dangerous to have low vitamin A, too. But this brings up another question, Karen. Okay. If you look, search uh, antioxidants like vitamin A, mm -hmm. um, there'll, be, there'll, there'll be things that are like, oh, yeah, don't take antioxidants because they cause cancer. Okay. And there's studies done that show that taking antioxidants cause cancer. But how can that be? It's illogical, right? Okay. Okay, good. So um, play along with me, Karen. Okay. It's Just illogical. Interested. Exactly. So here's the thing. How can an antioxidant that can help you cure cancer cause cancer? Well, what, what you're missing, Karen, no. what, you, what people are missing 
is that I, I'm missing it. It's okay for you to say that. Antioxidants come in networks in nature. Okay. They never come as one antioxidant that's synthetically made in a petri dish. Okay. Okay. They don't come like that. So when you consume uh, Mother Nature, Mother okay, Nurture, Mother Nurture, in that video. Uh, if you consume food or antioxidants from Mother Nature, you have all these different networks of antioxidants. What happens, um, and I'm just going to have to say this now, I'm going to have to get into a little bit and then I'll okay. shut up. Okay, so what we're trying to do is neutralize a free radical, which is uh, a little thing that's spinning around that has unpaired electrons. So okay. it's kind of a wild thing that's destroying everything. So an antioxidant donates one of its electrons to stabilize this thing, okay? okay. So it's stabilizing. Keep it, up, right? people. Okay, good. So what happens if the antioxidant donates an electron, it now becomes an oxidant. A free radical. Yes. How did you know that? Okay. Well, because you gave up your twin and now you're alone. Very good, Karen. So now, now you just what, go out on the town so and now, you're acting a little crazy another trying to hook up. Okay, thank you very much. Now another antioxidant will donate an uh, electron to that uh, oxidant, stabilizing right. it. So you have this whole chain of events to the point where you know, now we can keep sharing the love, you know, so to speak. So that's kind of, when you, t when you give someone a very specific synthetic antioxidant, like even vitamin A, and you, and you, you, be, you actually just create a free radical by doing that. So that's why you So why is it cancer. beneficial? It's not beneficial to take individual synthetic antioxidants at all. Uh -huh. You want to get it from food or food concentrates, because that's where you get the, the balance. Okay. Good. Okay. Good with that? That's not, right. I think that's technically that's a second tip. That's actually that's a freebie. That's an extra bonus, and we still got two more, Karen. Okay. So stay tuned. It's a freebie. Um, but here's a good question: What about veggie fries, like the snacks, the puffed chips yeah. made of uh, like um, chickpea and the vegetable fries, the vegetable chips, the all of these things. Yeah, I'm not into them. Uh, I mean, you can steam make your own, but when you start puffing things, there's a great book called um, Beating the Food Giants by this author named Paul Stitt. And uh, he was a biochemist, and uh, they kicked him out because he found that there's some serious problems when you puff things, like puff cereals and puff whatever. It releases pro um, chemicals. And so you should read the book to find out more on that. I'm not going to give it away, but you don't want to do puffed anything. Right. You could also do a study with Mice. That's another another topic. Okay. We'll talk about okay, that we'll another talk about time. That. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Phone call. Okay. Good. So we're going to go right to uh, Kita from Cal Virginia, actually Chantilly. Are you there? Yes, Doctor. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, Very good. And you had a question about supplements, right? Yes. Uh, first, I want to say thank you all for your video. It helped me a lot for losing weight and improve my health. Thank you for that. Awesome. You're welcome. My question is, I took most of your supplements. It has magnesium tetrate, so I just want to know, is that safe to take a longer time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, magnesium citrate is totally safe. It's a really a good one because it's... Uh, you get the, the magnesium, but the citrates are also beneficial, especially if you're on keto, because they decrease the risk of uh, oxalates in your body. So they neutralize the oxalates. So you can kind of kill two birds with one stone. Okay. And I have fibroids, so I'm taking the C card. Is that helping for that? Uh, all I can say is fibroids definitely is an estrogen dominant situation. And when you take C-Kelp, you have iodine that helps decrease the uh, receptors for excess estrogen in the body. Um, so I can't say that's going to cure anything, but it can. Uh, I, there's definitely a relationship between C-Kelp and helping balancing your estrogen. All right, good question. Thank you very much. And Rose from New York, are you there? Yeah. Hi. Hi. What was your question? Um, what was that? What kind of fasting do you recommend after consuming like a high carb meal, like pasta or ramen? Yeah. Um, like one, yeah, one meal, or like when you go on vacation and then you come back, like 
what do you recommend to yeah. do? To try to like counter that, you mean? Yeah, because I've done, you know, the 48 hour mm -hmm. after eating, you know, in an Italian restaurant. Um, but what do you recommend? Here's, here's what I would do, Rose. Um, of course, um, you don't want to make a habit of it. Um, but you just filled up your liver with um, carbs and sugar, right? Um, and so, obviously fasting, now your body's going to use that sugar and your fasting and then eventually the fat. You might end up um, raising, in, well, you're going to raise insulin and it's going to bump your fat, you're going to bump you out of fat burning. And you're, you're going to go back to the other conversion and it's going to be harder to do this because you're going to, um, you're not burning fat now, you're going to have a low blood sugar situation. So you might feel pretty funky. But one more thing you should do, and that is uh, if you happen to accidentally consume a plate of pasta because you went to Europe. Accidentally? Yeah, and someone forced you to consume that because you had to consume it happens. or else you, they would completely disown you. Um, one thing you should do is go exercise. And that way you can quickly burn off that sugar and then uh, you'll be, it'll be out of the system pretty fast, faster than even fasting. If you combine the two, that's even faster. But exercise is a good way to burn off excess sugar. All right, thanks for your question. All right, Karen, we're, we're over to you for a, a really good question. All right. This time make it really good. Uh, why would keto and IF change your menstrual cycle? Well, when you're actually um, going on, when you're changing, especially IF, intermittent fasting, you're, you're creating a huge change in the body with a lot of different things. And think about this, Karen. Yeah. It, let's say, for example, there's no food. Your body goes into survival mode. Mm -hmm. Is the first part of the survival getting pregnant, becoming fertile? Probably not. Right. It's because you, you're like, that's not something... That's a little bit of a, a different, that's like a secondary survival mechanism. So your body will tend to adju make adjustments and you may have some strange things happen with your cycle. But this is actually temporary. So uh, if you're having enough nutrients and you gradually go into this and you're adapting and you're burning fat, um, you shouldn't have a problem with your fertility. In fact, you should improve your fertility and you should actually improve your cycles and and your hormones and your endocrine system will be a lot happier. So, I mean, like, remember at the Keto Summit, there were so many women who all of a sudden got pregnant when they were introduced to IF and Keto. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was quite remarkable. So, yeah. So that being said. There you go. So go on Keto and IF and get pregnant. Is that the message? <laughs> that is the message. And reproduce. Yeah. On Keto. All right, Karen, as you're studying for some really good juicy questions. I'm going to go to Stephanie from Florida. Are you there? Hi, Dr. Berg. Hi. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Sure. So my question is about digesting vegetables. Um, I've been dealing with this problem for quite some time. Um, I want to get my 7 to 10 cups in like you recommend, but I've tried everything. Probiotics, digestive enzymes, I steam my veggies, nothing works. Um, I'm concerned about fatty liver if I stop eating them. So have you ever heard of this before? Yeah, so you said nothing works for losing weight or what? Uh, digesting vegetables. I oh. already lost my weight. I'm just looking to maintain, but I can't digest it for anything and it makes me sick every day. Okay. What are the symptoms? Is it is it bloating or is it um, gas or what is it? It's yeah, it's kind of both. It's definitely the bloating. I get the gas like the whole nine yards, and I notice that the next day after I go to the bathroom and get it all out, I'm fine. But okay. it's like right after I eat, I start getting bloated up. Okay, so in this situation, um, chances are there could be a situation, you should research this. I have a video on it on SIBO, S-I-B-O, in which case um, you may have some bacteria growing in the small intestine. So as soon as you add the fiber it flares up and creates a hornet's nest, okay? So for you, I would actually not consume fiber and vegetables at this point until you clear that up. I explain how to do that in the video. You have apple cider vinegar, there's an herbal, natural herbal antibiotic you can take, um, just different, different herbs. And then to, to reestablish that in addition to taking a good probiotic. Uh, so that's one thing I would do. Now, you're concerned about the liver and things. 
But what you could do is take the vegetables without the fiber. There is a product I have. It's called wheatgrass juice powder. Um, I, every morning, I take two scoops in some water. Boom. Drink that down. That's a tremendous amount of wheatgrass without the fiber. So you're getting the nutrients without the fiber. That's what I would do if I were you. Until And do this for about a month until you can kind of reestablish the flora so you have the microbes in the right place and enough of them to digest the vegetables. And then gradually go into it and then start with maybe some steamed vegetables. But you're going to have to work on the flora in your gut because that's where you're running into a problem. All right. Thanks, Stephanie. Good question, Karen. That was hey, a really excellent question. Hold the book up again. People are asking what's the name of the book. It's on a need-to-know basis. Camera. Yeah. The new body type guide. This is an upgrade from my uh, The Seven Principles of Fat Burning with uh, many, many additional positive things that... And changes. Over a thousand hours of changes. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's all filled with pictures, okay? It's easy reading. And there's no extra anything in there. It's, it took me a long time to write this in. You know that for a fact, Karen. I know that for a fact. It's, so I would recommend... Um, what about the companion book? Well, really, this companion important. book is comes with it if you go to the website. And you just basically... DrBerg.com. You go right through it. And within a matter of 45 minutes, you can read this whole book. And this gives you the... Can you show them what it's okay. called? Yeah. You can jump in and just... Get this data in 45 minutes, and then fill in the blank with the other book. Okay, so that's what I would recommend. And I, you know, there's, I think there's what happens, and this happens over and over again. A lot of the, the challenges people have is they're doing the basics of keto and IF, but they have another issue, or it doesn't really work for them. So this book handles all the things that could happen because. You might have some weaknesses within the adrenal and the liver and the gallbladder and the thyroid, the ovary. Well, this goes into all the other reasons why it might not just really work very well. So if you want to get really good results, get the book. If you want mediocre results? Don't get the book. Don't get the book. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. Are we ready for another tip? Well, um, someone here wants to know what's a good replacement for ketchup, which also raises the question, what's, what about tomato sauces in general? Well, ketchup, most of it's high fructose corn syrup. Some of it's just regular sugar. Now they're saying, hey, we use real sugar. Well, still, you don't want to do that um, because it's, gonna, it's usually going to be put on protein, and then you're going to actually create all sorts of problems with an exaggerated spike in insulin. Um, what you can do is there are ketchup um, brands that have stevia. You can find that. Um, but I would use mayonnaise and, and mustard instead of ketchup. That's what I would do if I were you. Now, as far as tomato sauce, um, you want to find the lowest sugar uh, possible, like two grams, and stick with that. Um, but yeah, there's, there's usually it's like a lot of sugar in the different spaghetti sauces. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right, Karen. So, guys, we're at the next tip here. Oh. And after this tip, we got one more, so don't go away. Okay, so what is the tip? The tip is, what is the absolute best thing to do at the first sign of a cold? I know the answer to this. Oh, really? I think I do. Go ahead, Karen. Tell us. Share the knowledge and the wisdom. Fast. That's definitely part of the, the answer. Oh. That's good. No, no, that's part of it. Oh, okay. That's, you have, because it's actually five different things you do. <gasps> Yeah. You said one. Okay. What is I lied. the thing? I lied. There's more. The package of things. Yes, the tips that you would do. Okay. Okay. So, so now we have to write this down. So get so your pencils so out. You get, you're, you're absolutely right. You're Fasting is fast. Yeah, because you don't want to nourish your body when you start coming down with some, you know, cold. Because as soon as you start to go on a fast, you have an instant improvement in your uh, immune system. Um, but let's say, for example, you're traveling and right. you're feeling run down, and you go on a plane, and you get all these people hacking and coughing mm. and sneezing, this crying baby next to you, and all of a sudden you start feeling a tickle in your throat mm. or a little something in your sinuses, right? That would be the first sign. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say that there's usually, actually, also when people are susceptible to viruses and things like that, there's always some stress going on too. So you want to do whatever you can to attack that stress. Relax. 
totally. That is very, very important, guys, okay? So don't forget that. Uh, zinc is very important, and vitamin C, but not as a supplement. You want to take it as an, a lemon, so you want to just oh. consume an entire lemon. Now, if you actually take the white part around the lemon, those are bioflavonoids, or if you just peel the very outer part and you eat this whole lemon, that would give you the most vitamin C versus mm. just squeezing the juice out of it. You'll get some vitamin C, but if you actually eat the white part, you're, you'll do even better with that, okay? So, um, but that's only four things. I'm not done yet, Karen. I'm not done yet. I'm just looking through my notes okay. because I have them all organized here because I knew you were going to ask me that. Okay. Right. So you want to also um, take apple cider vinegar. Why? Because mm. apple cider vinegar speeds up your phagocytes. <gasps> I have been wondering what would speed up my phagocytes. You know what a phagocyte is? Okay. Phagocyte is um, a type of white blood cell that actually eats a bacteria. It helps your, it's, helps your immune system thrive. Mm. So they accelerate in their eating of bacteria with acid. Mm. That's why vitamin C supposedly works because of the ascorbic acid. acid. Apple cider vinegar is a little bit better. So you do apple cider vinegar. You want to also stay away from alcohol mm -hmm. and sugar if you're getting sick. Right. And the best thing, Karen, is just to um, stay super healthy so you, you're never susceptible. That's like more important. So that's the second tip, guys. All right. We got one more. That was pretty important. This is very important. Especially around the holidays. We got some, some claps in that one. Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. Audience went crazy on that. I know. That was just. That was a killer. <sighs> that's right. You got yeah. a chance for one more tip coming up later in the show. Yeah. Now we need to go to California <laughs> by. Let's go um, to California because we need some sunshine. How do I pronounce this person? Hanye. Hanye from California. Are you there? Hanye. Yes. Hi, Dr. Berg. Hi. Um, thank you for taking my call and for the video. Sure. Um, so my question is, um, I'm 42 years old. Um, I had a healthy pregnancy in 2013-14. And in 2016, I was diagnosed with perimenopause. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been dealing with the irregular periods and all the symptoms since. Um, my most recent blood test um, showed high FSH level, sorry, level about 70. Um, you know, normal estradiol, if I'm saying it right, and um, also low ferritin and low vitamin D. Okay. So right. um, I'm not overweight. Um, I. Uh, do yoga at least twice a week on an average week. And um, so let me add one more tip and then I tell you my question. Um, I haven't had a period since September okay. and my doctor has prescribed Provera. I haven't taken it yet. Okay. Um, my husband is on a keto diet and I'm interested in keto diet. Yeah. So considering all of these two things, keto diet is good for me or should I do the adrenal type? I, I watch your adrenal type, uh, body type right. video. Should I go well, on that me, diet? Let me just think about that for a second. Let's see. Would keto be good for that? I just have to really consider that. Yes, it would be. It would be. Very important. In fact, keto is what you need to do, a healthy version of it, be, simply because, um, I mean, even just think about just the concept of doing a low carb. You're going to instantly improve the estrogen levels and the androgen levels and... Um, insulin levels. And the other thing that you want to do to support the endocrine system, and this is why you'd want to do keto, is you want to increase your fat. Fat supports the endocrine system. Going on a low-fat diet destroys the endocrine system. Uh, as far as the adrenal body type eating plan in this book, it's a version of the keto plan anyway. You're going to do the general keto thing, and then you're going to tweak it with the adrenal. Uh, you might need to do that, but you start out with a healthy keto and IF basic plan. You have to implement that right away. That's going to help you. If you're low in iron, you need some red meat, um, rare red meat, probably some steak and things like that would be a good source. Um, and then if you're low in vitamin D, you need sun, but you can get the vitamin D in all the fats that you're going to be eating. Like the, the salmon, cod liver oil is a great source of vitamin D. Um, these are things that will... Um, increase your fertility, and improve your cycle. 
the last thing I'm going to say, and, and then I'm going to zip it.com, is this. Uh, there's a product that I would highly recommend ordering if you have a problem with your cycle and if you also want to improve just your general fertility if you're a female. And it's cod liver, and it's, you can get it in a little can. Um, you can order it online, Amazon. Cod liver has a great DHA, omega-3, vitamin A, vitamin D, and um, that will help you in your female organs. All right, thanks for your call. All right, Karen, over to you. Okay, I had one here and then you were. You lost it? You kept... Talking? Talking. <laughs> I know, that's the problem with me. I know. Oh. <laughs> All right, you think about it. I'm gonna to go to Laura from Indiana. Oh! Sorry, Laura, are you there? Hi, yes I am. How are you, Dr. Berg? I'm doing great, thanks. I hope you had a happy holiday. Oh, yeah. I have a question for you regarding that. Um, I've been on keto for two years, and I've kept the weight off. Um, however, last Christmas, I went off the um, diet, not, not not this past Christmas, but before, and I gained like seven pounds. took me a long time to get it off. This year, I prepared, and I went on YouTube, and I researched low-carb keto Thanksgiving recipe. So I made a keto Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas dinner. Um, low carb stuffing, low carb gravy, low carb green bean casserole. And I also went to your website and I made the sugar free low carb chocolate chip cookies. Now I ate this over Christmas and I still gained four pounds mm -hmm. and I'm really mad and I'm wondering do you think it's just water weight mm -hmm. um, because you know I baked with the almond flour and even though it was technically keto approved I probably had more carbs than I'm usually used to yeah so okay Laura this brings up a really good point and another video that I'm going to do on this because this is like gaining weight on keto right okay so this is what happens um, it's the sugar alcohols and sometimes the sugar alcohols um, involve other sweeteners like different fibers like inulin and these things can bloat you. The fibers go into the gut and you retain water. You gain four pounds but I'll guarantee it wasn't fat. It was more fluid and it was, you might feel bloated but it's not in a fat situation. So the problem is, especially over the holidays, you're combining all these different foods and these low carb treats and desserts and then you feel bloated. Um, it's not sugar but you're bloating for another reason. Um, so it's one of those things that you will, you, when you go back on your plan you're gonna find that the fluid will come off pretty quick within a couple days and, and, it, and you'll realize it was an actual fat so that's good but um, some people are real sensitive to these sugar alcohols and they shouldn't be doing them. Uh, I think it was I think it was the ingredients could be the almond flour, but I think it was the sugar alcohols in the cookies. I'm sorry. All right, Laura, thanks for your call. All right, Karen. Especially the chocolate chips. Yeah, because those chocolate chips have uh, inulin, they have um, xylitol, erythritol, and you But know. can I share my experiment that I did? Sure, Karen. So I always make keto stuff on the holidays, and I made the chocolate chip cookies. Now, it, the almond flour does sometimes because I'll make so many different things and it'll be a lot of almond flour. My body can react a little bit, but those chocolate chip cookies mm -hmm. have a lot of inulin mm. and I get completely bloated. Mm -hmm. So I have to be careful with that. But what I tried yesterday was, there were a couple little chocolate chip cookies left. I purposely ate them on an empty stomach and I took some of the probiotic. The Dr. Berg probiotic, because that's friendly bacteria, which is the it's the bloating that your your stomach can't handle. Doesn't have enough bacteria to handle that uh, sugar substitute, and it worked. Interesting. Well, that brings up a good point because the the microbes eat fiber, so you're probably just giving them fiber to consume and deal with it. So right. it probably just took the stress right off. You know what? I'm going to do more experiments on that, Karen. So, yeah, when I get it's home, an experiment. If I'm going to eat some more of those cookies and see if that does well, the work as well. The cookies are now all gone. Oh, okay. But you could just eat some chocolate chips. Yes, I could do that. Yeah. All right. 
Good. All right. Well. So there was another question. I, I lost, but I retain enough uh, of it in my mind's eye. Okay. And it was someone who had a friend. Yeah. That was burping a lot, and everything caused this person to burp. Even water caused a ridiculous amount of burping. That's 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 a problem with the gallbladder, and. Um, in that situation, I would support the gallbladder. I have a lot of videos on it. Um, there's a really good, it's called gallbladder formula. You should do that because that supports not just the gallbladder, but the stomach and the pancreas. And I, I have videos on what to eat for the gallbladder. But yeah, so that's what that is. Um, that person that I was just had that question, did I click? Was that this person right here? I don't think it was, right? Yeah, Mark Okay. So, yeah. You already right. spoke to that person. Okay, I did? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it was Nashua? No. That's a new person. Okay. Yes. Nashua, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Did I already talk to you? I'm confused. No, I didn't. Okay. You had a, you had a oh. question because I didn't talk to you. I didn't think I did. You're from North Carolina. What was your question? Uh, I wanted to know, what are your views on drinking kava root? while on keto, and what is your and your wife's skin regimen, healthy skin regimen? What was my what? Skin regimen. Uh, yes. I wanted to know, yeah. what are your views of drinking kava mm -hmm. root, tea kava root tea while on keto, yeah. and your and your wife's healthy skin regimen? Okay. Well, um, first of all, you can do kava tea, not a problem at all. Uh, as far as my skin, it's part of a... Just uh, it's it's nothing special other than doing healthy keto because you need all the healthy fats. I consume a lot of fat. Um, I do a, a lot of vegetables. Um, I do cruciferous. I do the wheatgrass, and I just do that. But intermittent fasting is the icing on the cake. I'm sorry. Um, I shouldn't talk about icing on the cake. It's like really <laughs> in, really important because you start to. Um, get that healthy glow and you actually give your digestive system a chance to clean out and the body starts repairing all the skin tissue. To support skin though, you need food high in vitamin A. That would be butter, salmon, cod liver oil, like those type of things. It's really, really important. Um, versus putting different lotions on the surface of the skin. Um, you gotta work within the inside out. Um, I have some videos on that, you can check it out, but it's basically nothing special other than just Healthy keto. What? What's so funny? Should I answer for myself? Yes, you answer for yourself. <laughs> Healthy keto. Now, uh, I I do use a little moisturizer, but it's it's always if I use anything, it's a very organic, natural, and I often just use coconut oil. But I I mean, there's many days I don't I don't do anything to my skin. Well, here's the question that we all want to know, Karen. If I just feel a little dry, like it's winter dry, then I'm like, but I, I don't. So, Tweeny. Karen, so next Friday, we're going to reveal um, three of Karen's hair tips. Okay? We're going to. Is today a good day wanna, to talk People want to know what you do for your hair. And I, I can tell them right now, but I'm not going to. You have to come on next week to find out. Exclusive interview with Karen, what she does to have really nice hair. Hair, right here. Yeah. Um, okay. And guys, it's not genetic, okay? So I'm just <laughs> going to tell you that. So now, do you have a, another question? No. Okay, good. So I'm going to go to Ashley then. Ashley, are you there from Tennessee? Yes, sir. Hey, Dr. Bird. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, I, I, was on, um, I was trying to be a vegetarian about three years ago. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I did... I did not become vegetarian, but I at that time I reduced a lot of uh, protein mm -hmm. intake, and uh, I gradually lose my period. Mm -hmm. And I thought that, and it all I was about 49 years old mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. and I thought that it, I was just naturally to get into the menopause, um, and. Then about a year later, I might I become so thin, and I start to do research and get on the ketogenic diet. I have been on keto for two years now, and I eat I constantly eat craving for fat, 
And now uh, my period, it's not a really period. I have some, some, something come back. I feel it's a come, I don't know if it's a possible comeback, but it's not a, like a period that much of a blood. It's just like, a, like a, the very last day of my period, that kind of a situation. And but it has been lasting for, for about two weeks. So I'm just wondering, is that possible my period can be coming back? How old and because are you? I'm at this stage. How old are you? I'm 52 now, okay. 52. Yeah. Okay, well, this is anti-aging. Your period's coming back, and so this is your reversing the aging process, and now you have to go back through your whole complete cycles over again. I'm just being sarcastic. Um, now, like, this happened before, like, this lady came in. She did healthy keto. She was 60, I think 65. She hadn't had a period in 10 years, and she had a period. Now, what's up with that? What could cause that? That freaked her out. I, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think you're... Your endocrine system is waking up a bit. It's 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 kind of maximizing, and it just probably pumped out one more egg that was left there, that was just kind of coming out. And so, because a, a woman is um, born with four hundred eggs, and they exactly. release them. Exactly. Yes. Have you counted? Yes, I have. And so, what happens is they release the eggs, and they, um, and then you run out, and then you you go through menopause. Then why do why do women hit menopause at different times? Well, I guess because they... If I knew that, would I be sitting right here, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, we start... <laughs> Steve, I'm going to deck you. <laughs> Our producer. So, here's um, the... Let me just get They back start to the, at different times, right? Yeah. But it's not... It's like you have so many different variables. They're, they're, it's true that women do get pregnant and then they don't have a period for like several years. Or, or not several years, but a year nine months, whatever. Oh, right, and if you're breast, nursing. Yeah, right. there's a lot of variables where they might go through a period of time where they don't have any period because they're taking birth control pills, whatever. There's, there's a lot of variables. Right. But the point is that um, when you hit your 52, that's you're supposed to run out of those eggs and then you go, go into the hibernation. 52. 52, exactly. And that's for everyone. Um, but Ashley, I wouldn't worry about it. I would continue to keep doing this. Um, especially if you're getting all these other benefits. Uh, I think that, um, you know, you're going to get all these different changes are just going. I would support the adrenal because the adrenals are, are the gland that's backing you up right now and not give it too much concern. Thanks, Ashley. Now, I, I need to go to my last point. We need another tip. Yes, we need a tip. So in this tip, Karen, um, we're going to talk about the absolute worst foods to consume. When you're going to the grocery store, mm -hmm. there's a series of foods that you want to avoid. This is them. Okay? You give me the first one. Sugar. That was the obvious one. Right. Yeah. Number two? Grains. All right. You got that one. Number three? <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is one of them right here. Can you read that off? Common chain vulva. No, you couldn't even read that. Could you can't read no, it around? I, I, okay, so let me just go through it. Vulva. Okay. Um, you want to avoid agava nectar. Agava. That's worse than sugar because mm -hmm. it has like ninety something percent fructose, and that messes up the liver. But that's sugar too. That's a sugar. It's worse category. than sugar. Oh. It's worse than sugar because it acts like alcohol in the liver, um, and of course high fructose corn syrup. Any any foods with that you want to avoid. The next food would be pro, uh, pro soy protein isolates. Not a good food to consume. Um, our bodies weren't designed to consume soy protein isolates. Very, very bad. And then the other one that's you want to avoid is anything combining sugar and protein, like barbecue, ribs, and things like that. Um, and then also, if you have uh, even fat and sugar, like even the ice creams out there, that's really bad because and I want to bring this point up because it, it actually causes your blood to get really sticky and it can cause all sorts of abnormal proteins to grow in the brain, in the heart, in the eyes. They're called glycated proteins, if you wanted to know. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the, the main foods you want to stay away from. Okay, Karen? Okay. Good. All right, good. That, and that leaves the perimeter. That leaves one food you can drink water. <laughs> And purified water and celery. 
Now we're going to go to um, Arej from Sterling, Virginia. Are you there? Yeah, hi. Arij. Good morning. Arij. Good morning. Arij. Arij. Sorry about I'm that. I'm from Virginia, Sterling. Okay. Great. You're right down the street. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm 30 years old, and I have one question. My job is night shift, so I'm starting like uh, at like 11 and uh, finish like 7 a.m. morning. So how I can deal with keto? All right. So did you say you're on a, a midnight shift? Is that what you said? Yeah. 11. Yeah. To... Yeah. Everything. 11 to 7.30. Okay, so you need to talk to your manager to get this shift back to the regular schedule <laughs> immediately. Um, now, here's, oh my God. here's what you could do. There's either, there's, the worst thing you could possibly do is be on a rotational shift. So if you're going to be on the shift, make sure it's consistent on the days off. Try to go keep the schedule in there. Just because the body gets so confused, it does increase cortisol and that could add another dynamic. But you're just going to have to take all the advice that I recommend and then push it forward. <laughs> So, like, when you're working at night, third shift, you're, you know, you go on this fast, and then maybe you eat when you get home, and then you sleep during the day. It's just going to be the, you just adjust your schedule. But the key is to keep it consistent and not do rotational shifts. That's so much stress on your, on your system. It is just not going to be good. All right? Thanks for your call. Karen? We're, oh, we're, is there one more tip? We're, we're, gonna, we, we're at the end. We actually, I gave the last tip, okay. and now I have no more tips, so I'm just going to go with the questions. Okay, why does someone get constipated when they're on keto? I know you touched on this from a different symptom, but you haven't talked about well, constipation. Well, typically, there's things that are the most common, and there's a lot of other reasons. But when you go on keto, the version that I recommend, I recommend a lot of vegetables. And some people are not used to digesting those vegetables. They're not, they're not able to deal with all the fiber. So they overload the system with too much fiber and they get constipated. That's usually what happens. Mm -hmm. So in, the, in which case you cut back the vegetables and you gradually start you And know, you can lightly steam yeah. vegetables. Or just stick with maybe a little bit of a salad um, and then steam the other type of vegetables. But now the other case, the person doesn't consume any vegetables at all. They're just doing a lot of, like that guy that called last week. He was a young, younger guy. He was doing chicken and cheesecake. Like right. there's no vegetables. So... Um, what's going to happen eventually is you're, you're not doing the quality of fats, but you end up with constipation because you're not having any fiber to feed the microbes. It's always like a sweet spot to figure out how much you can deal with, but you do want to go a little bit higher just because, ideally, just because you want to get your nutrients, especially potassium. And, but as you do intermittent fasting, the need for those nutrients do go down. So you don't always have to be so focused on like, oh, I have to get this amount because your body will adapt. So there's a guideline. What you're saying is there's a guideline, but that everyone has to figure out figure there what out. works for them. Yeah, so the, that's why um, I started to develop a Dr. Berg app mm -hmm. for the macros. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much stopped the project because I realized that it's so it would take a crew of 20 people full time for like 10 years because there's so many little variables you have. You have the person's weakness in their digestive system. You have the adrenals. You have their age. You have their speed of metabolism. I mean, like, and then you mix in there the different meals. So it's like, I'm not going to go down that road. Yeah. So it's best to eat the food and listen to your body and see what happens and make an adjustment. And <coughs> we're you need get, extra supplements, and that's why you made the electrolytes and the wheatgrass and the nutritional yeast. And we're going to give you the guidelines, mm -hmm. okay? And then you're going to have to tweak it to your body. And can we have some background music? I like a little background music So today. we're going to give you the basics. We You're going to tweak it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, I thought it was more. Should oh, everybody. Everybody. Oh, gosh, Jenny, no, Let's no. just sway. No, please. I'm trying to read this right here. It's over. Years on okay, guys, so shows. we're going to see you next year, guys. Next year. Uh, I hope you had a great year. Um, this next year is going to be focused on getting your health back in and doing keto for real. Oh, the song is over. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Happy New Year. Yeah. See you next year, guys.